so we're out here in the forests of Algonquin. Last night I set 80 Sherman traps to catch some small mammals. So hopefully we've caught some deer mice, some squirrels, some chipmunks, a couple of voles, maybe a couple of jumping mice too. So we're gonna see who's in our traps. We're gonna record measurements like if they're adults, juveniles, their sex, their, if they're reproductively active or not, as well as we're gonna see if they have ear tags and if not we're gonna give them some ear tags so we can identify who's who. And so this is uh, North America's longest small mammal project and it's also one of the world's longest ecological studies. So we look at abundance and different life history and different pop population statistics on small mammals. Yeah, so we got a deer mouse. Mm. So this is a deer mouse. She's an adult female. Because, so females have a little pseudo penis, so sometimes it's a little hard to tell. But the dis distance between that and the anus, because it's so close, it tells me it's a female. And she's kind of like nice and pink up there, mm -hmm. so she's reproductively mature. And then they all get ear tags, so I, we know when we catch someone again. Yeah, so this one here, this is a woodland jumping mouse. They have a very nice bright gold color. Yeah, they have these crazy long feet. They're about twice the size of the deer mouses, and they're obviously for jumping. And I think if my stats are right, they can jump up to a meter in length. This one's new. what the great thing is about all these long-term studies that we do so you're seeing stuff before you know it's happening so this is great to see if maybe climate change will have an impact on the small mammals um, we're also seeing how small mammal their populations is growing or crashing over time so there's been a few years ago there was a big woodland jumping mouse crash we don't know why exactly but so we look at things like that and also um, so at least since 1994, there's been this kind of orange substance on the ears and genitals of the small mammals. And it's only in 2015 that researchers dig, dug like a little more to figure out what that was. And it turns out it's mites and it might even be a new species of mites. So we're doing more research on that to see if it's only found here, if it is new, what it's doing to the small mammals. And then how did you end up at this research station? So I'm very lucky. So the supervisor at Laurentian that I really wanted to work with, Dr. Albrecht schultz hosted I kept asking him if he had any positions for an undergrad student to do her thesis. And thankfully, I got sent here. So last year, it was my summer job, but I was also collecting research and data to work on all last year. In STEM in general, so science, technology, math, and engineering. Um, there are certain female researchers who do get treated differently, so their ideas won't be taken seriously, or um, sometimes there's a pay difference. I believe in the United States it's something like that, where there is a gender difference. Um, so I've been very lucky, so I have a great male supervisor, a lot of my colleagues are males as well, and I have never been treated differently because I'm a girl. 
and I think I'm very lucky because I don't think everyone can say that and if everyone is if anyone is ever in that situation you do belong here and you just have to work hard and prove that you can do it just as good as they can but, but you've never seen too much of that here. no so thankfully I have heard stories so I've had a female prof say a story where she gave an idea and then she wasn't listened to she wasn't taken seriously and then a male colleague gave the exact same idea and everyone jumped on it and thought it was great was that yeah. a while ago though or is that was recent uh definitely in the last 10 years yeah